Today, I'm going to be talking about a SQL-based metrics layer powered by DuckDB. Uh, I'm Mike Driscoll. I'm the co-founder and CEO at Real Data, and um, just really excited to share what we've been working on as a team. So what do I want folks to take away from this talk? Uh, a few questions I hope you get answered. One is, why do we feel, like many, that metrics are the core building blocks of analytics? Why should they be defined in SQL? Why uh, is DuckDB the ideal engine to manage metrics? And finally, I'll speculate on everyone's favorite topic, AI, and how that can accelerate potentially metrics modeling and exploration. So just first, what's real? Um, we're a BI tool. There's a lot of BI tools out there, but we are a BI tool that's uniquely designed to take advantage of DuckDB's uh, incredible performance. We're optimized for OLAP engines, so slicing and dicing in Rails is instant. Uh, we don't uh, hold back. We, we really uh, uh, design the experience of using Rails to be almost like driving you know, uh, uh, an automobile uh, with a stick shift. We also embrace BI as code, so big believers in um, local development uh, and then being able to publish what you work on locally, globally through Git workflows. And then really what I'm here to talk about today is a metrics-first philosophy. So at Rill, we think that you shouldn't have to actually design dashboards. Most of us, frankly, are not designers of dashboards. We're not good at picking colors and thinking about pie charts. Um, with Rill, you design your metrics model, and then we auto-generate the dashboards. And in fact, we also auto-generate the experience you get with that dashboard. OK, so I'm feeling, uh, feeling lucky today. I am going to do a live demo of a DuckDB-powered uh, metrics uh, dashboard. Now, of course, with DuckDB, uh, what's great is we can develop locally. So even if you're on a plane or you're at a conference and the Wi-Fi goes out, um, you can usually rest assured that you might be OK. So um, if you want to try at home or you, know, you think you want to uh, kill my internet connection, you can go ahead and download Rail with this curl command. It's um, very simple to do. I've already downloaded Rill, so um, I'm just going to make sure the version's up to date. Looks pretty good. And uh, we're going to go ahead and, and actually build a new project called DuckCon 6. So Rill runs in localhost, uh, opens up, and you have a few options. You can look at a template project. But what I'm going to show off today is how Rill is able to build a metrics layer from some data and then build a dashboard on top of that metrics layer in just a few minutes. And I've got some interesting data that I was able to scrape. Um, a lot of public data out there. Uh, lots of companies are, I guess, scraping public data these days. Um, but I've got, uh, I've got a GitHub uh, scrape of every commit that's been made by the DuckDB development team since 2018. It's a Parquet file, my favorite format. I'm going to open it up here. And you know, look, DuckDB on a Apple Silicon doesn't even blink, right? A few hundred thousand rows. But there's an option here. You can see it brought in that Parquet file. It's giving us some profiling information on the side, imported the source successfully. And we have an option to generate a dashboard with AI. So we'll see if uh, 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 GPT-40 uh, uh, is still working right now. But if it is, what we're doing is we're making a call out to OpenAI. It's taking a look at a sample of that GitHub commit data. And just like that, we've actually built a metrics model and uh, a dashboard on top. So just to kind of take a look here, uh, what's happened is there's a dashboard file. That's BI as code. Uh, under the covers, that's a YAML file. We've got uh, a source file, of course, that already came in. And then we've got this metrics model that defines about 10 measures. And actually, every time I run this, GPT gets a little smarter. Um, you can see it's, it's defining a set of aggregate measures, total commits, total merge commits, average additions uh, per commit. And uh, then a set of dimensions that we might be interested in, like the commit hash or the username. So I can actually go to the dashboard here, and I can browse this locally. Um, first of all, we can see some pretty good trends. Uh, the DuckDB team has been pretty busy since 2018. And I can zoom in on this one area right here and see that um, something was going on on September 30th. It looks like there was, uh, well, I don't know, there was a commit of 7,000 uh, commits happen. And Tice, Tice J had, uh, yeah, 7,000 commits on that day. I don't know if Mark or Hannes, what, what was going on there with this massive spike on that day? Okay. All right. So 
so we built this dashboard if we wanted. We could we actually go ahead and deploy that to the cloud. I won't do that. But we just started with a Parquet file, just a Parquet file of scraped commits. And we've actually built a pretty somewhat usable dashboard that we could probably clean up and go further. Um, so that gives you a sense of why RHEL, um, how RHEL works and really why we care so much about metrics. But just to go a step further, we think that metrics really are the right size building blocks for analytics. Fact tables are too raw. If, if you know, I try to look at that Parquet file, I'm not sure I would get very far in terms of insight. But on the other hand, most reports are too baked. If I just gave you, you know, a PDF of a bunch of graphs, and, and frankly, we all look at GitHub Analytics a lot, you don't get a lot of insight when you just get a baked report. And so metrics are great because they're flexible. A metric is an aggregate function. This is uh, quoting Jillian Hyde, who's been doing some work on metrics in SQL. But metrics are aggregate functions that can be evaluated in different contexts. And so they've got shape to them. We all know that um, you know, here revenue is, is sum of sales. But then there's these different contexts, predicate contexts. You can think about revenue in Europe or Amsterdam. You can think about time and looking at revenue for the last quarter or year. So these, um, the flexibility is really important uh, when we think about analytics. That's the way we look at data all the time. Metrics are fast. So one of the things, of course, we love about DuckDB is it's insanely fast. But uh, there are some memory limits you know, of what you can put even now on your laptop. And so being able to actually pack more kind of information into um, what you can put in DuckDB is great. OLAP cubes, being able to, to roll data up um, and aggregate them uh, still can work for metrics, and it gets you about 10 to 100x less data than you started with. So that Parquet file, if I built an OLAP cube on it, might be 10 or 100 times smaller than what I started with. And then finally, metrics are intuitive. You know, people have been tabulating ledgers and spreadsheets and pivot tables for centuries. So when we talk about metrics, things like revenue or sums, counts, and averages, those are things that like, business users actually get, they can make sense of. Um, and so the flexibility, the speed, the intuitiveness of metrics are why we think it's really um, the right thing to build your analytics on. But all, also, as importantly, we think that metrics shouldn't be uh, written in DAX or LookML or VizQL or all these other languages that have come along. This is a, 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 a I think this is Andy uh, Pavlo, is that, from CMU. I think he's quoting from a Michael Stonebrecher paper about how, you know, the history of SQL is that uh, NO SQL eventually becomes KNOW SQL. Um, people basically learn SQL and they adopt it for almost everything. And I think we've seen that with DuckDB um, shifting left. More and more ETL is being done with SQL. And I think we will probably see more and more um, SQL shifting right, going kind of upstream of databases and being involved in BI applications like RHEL. Uh, and then, you know, uh, Eric, uh, I won't say his last name, but Eric B. from Modal uh, had this great blog a few years ago. Look, no one wants to learn your garbage query language, right? So I think as, as developers, probably we should all be careful not to think we're going to do a better job um, than SQL. And maybe Hannes and Mark, you guys are the exception because group by all is a pretty good, uh, pretty good syntax. <laughs> so you can keep developing your own query language, but the rest of us shouldn't do that. Um, and so in real, what we've really been working on the last, I would say, six to 12 months, among other things, is building a visual metrics editor in that tool real developer that I downloaded and was showing off, where you can actually go in and you can define your measures, your aggregate measures, just in SQL. Um, you can put case statements in, you can use all the power and the expressivity of SQL. It's a duck, it's duck SQL, which is great. Um, and then the other thing is that when you build a dashboard, Rill will take care of kind of managing that predicate context and thinking about the levels of detail. So you don't have to think about where clauses and group buys, you just have to think about that aggregate measure that you're defining uh, in Rill. I just threw this out here because um, Julian is a, a architect at Looker who's been thinking about uh, putting measures in SQL for a long time. I would be remiss if I didn't give him credit. This is not my, like most things, not my idea. Um, and I would say we're early. What Rill's doing is not, you know, we're not a pure SQL uh, metrics layer yet. There's a lot of foundational work that has to happen. Um, I'm optimistic that some of the work that's being done with DuckDB and your parser um, might actually allow someone like Julian to bring his ideas to life. 
Okay, so I'm just going to say a few more words about kind of um, the metric stack and how real operates, and again, why we think uh, a metrics layer is really important, and, and frankly, what, uh, what architectures we support for metrics layers. So a lot of what I would call legacy metric stacks are um, built on tools like data warehouses like Snowflake and Redshift and BigQuery, uh, and a lot of traditional BI tools, Tableau, Looker, and Sigma, basically act as, um, I would call them like SQL compilers. They just kind of rewrite SQL and send it like down the transom. And I think one of the challenges with um, traditional BI tools is that there can be a lot of inconsistency in metrics definitions. Oftentimes you have to put um, the metrics definitions in every BI tool, which is a little bit dangerous. Uh, also, many BI tools aren't really thinking about OLAP, so they're really just running regular standard full table scans on big tables. And when we go into customers sometimes, we just see um, some pretty awful things happening. And now Snowflake's not really incentivized to help their customers avoid full table scans. And then I would say the, the last piece is just in terms of dialects and coding languages. The nice thing about SQL is we all know it. And I think one of the reasons why JavaScript was very successful in terms of Node.js was that we were able to take one language and move it from client to server and kind of interchangeably. I think if we can move towards SQL uh, on the right side of databases, not just on the left side, uh, we'll have that same ability. So um, that gets us to what I think the architecture of a DuckDB-powered metric stack should be. Consistent metrics definitions. We can have a single layer where we store all of our definitions of what, um, you know, what these metrics are. Obviously, that you get the speed. OLAP uh, queries are going to be much faster, and you get SQL everywhere, up and down the stack. So you can take you know, predicate logic, and you can push it down. We're already seeing that with DuckDB quite a bit. Um, and I think that that fabric, that data lake, I put Iceberg there, that is really going to be the universal data fabric going forward. Right? I think that um, that's where the data lives, and all of us are just kind of living on top of that. OK, but there's some challenges. Uh, it's not all peaches and roses. Um, so data modeling uh, is hard, uh, and it does require some upfront pain. A lot of BI tools, a lot of folks that um, maybe aren't thinking about metrics layers, you just kind of can point at any table in your database, even including DuckDB, and get going. We do require that upfront uh, effort. Now, of course, we're trying to lean on someone like ChatGPT to take that pain down a bit, but still, typically, we have to go in and do some tuning. And the second thing is that metrics change, metric changes can be expensive. When you're building OLAP cubes, you change your model, you may have to rebuild those OLAP cubes, and that can be an expensive proposition. And then finally, and I know, you know we're all talking about scale up as uh, you know, the, the dream, and, and there's some great examples of what um, scaling up or you know, getting models to run uh, on much smaller amounts of hardware, but single node scale still has its limits. And so for us, some of our customers, we work with uh, AT&T, and Ericsson and Comcast, and you know, those customers just can't run uh, on my laptop, unfortunately. Not yet. OK, and so I've got a minute left, so uh, I want to speculate a little bit. Uh, this is, you know, what, what can we think that metrics would, um, what do they mean for the world of, of AI? And I think you just saw that actually, um, it's actually not uh, BS. Uh, we kind of surprised ourselves. More than 80% of RIL's metrics layers and dashboards are now built the first time around using GPT-4.0. So it's been, I use it all the time. Uh, so it's actually one of those non-BS uh, uses of AI. Uh, I think the other place where AI can assist is in optimization. So we're constantly thinking about how we can make DuckDB faster, casting you know, strings to enums, um, thinking about column ordering and how skip level indices work. AI can kind of do some of that stuff automatically. And then um, I would say that if, you know, if we think about what we like about tools like ChatGPT is that they're conversational. And DuckDB-powered um, metrics layers really are faster. And so you can actually have a conversation with your data in a way you couldn't if you're talking to a Redshift cluster that takes two minutes to return you know, a query. So um, faster queries mean more queries, you know, faster time to uh, insight. And then there's a lot of rich metadata, too, that um, we annotate metrics with that we don't really put into um, traditional database columns. This is, uh, I'll put these slides up so you can inspire yourself on, the, on your flight home or uh, with further reading, but definitely uh, Julian High gets the credit for uh, his work in SQL measures. And uh, that's it. I'll take any questions if we have time. Thank you very much.
Thank you very much for your talk, Mike. Uh, I have a bunch of questions, again, uh, for as we are returning from the break. Uh, QR code gets you to the slide, or you can ask and upload questions. It does uh, make my job up here easier, so uh, do it. Um, I have, uh, uh, the first question is, um, does uh, real work well for defining complex metrics that involve multiple sources and transformations? Uh, it does, because those, uh, typically the way we would recommend is you, you do a lot of modeling into SQL, and then once you've got your kind of, we usually think of a one big table model, you join a lot of things up in just your DuckDB tables, and then you build that joined, uh, you, you build your model on top of that joined table. So a lot of the complexity we're handing off to your tool. Just let us do it, that sounds <laughs> great. Um, excellent, um, there's a, a nice question. Um, do you see a psychological difference for users' interactions where, when they are using 60 FPS dashboards versus traditional slower dashboards? I mean, I think you could just, like, you can feel it, right? <laughs> I think we all know what it feels like to have that kind of close to the metal experience. And, um, and I, what I can say is when people deploy their dashboards, the biggest complaint is, hey, how come my dashboard's not as fast? Because it's, you know, now we're doing round trips to US East 1A. So even that 60 milliseconds for sure yeah. Uh, adds up, which is why we all love DuckDB on our laptops. Yeah, no, uh, no uh, we appreciate it that you like it so much. Uh, then there is a question about the metrics. So um, somebody asked, I didn't see you defining the metrics. Can you explain how that works? Uh, where do you define the metrics? Uh, okay, yeah. Well, you go into the, um, you would go into the, uh, if I can actually find where I can, yeah, here we go. You go into the metrics view and you can actually um, change, uh, change these expressions here. So it's basically part of real developer, but you also can fall back into what we kind of can call squamal. This is SQL embedded Squamble. in YAML. <laughs> and so... Uh, that sounds a bit unholy. <laughs> so, but but we're, we think that most people are happy living in UI land for some of these uh, parameters. Okay. Um, yeah, very cool. Then um, maybe one more question. Um, have you considered replacing ChatGPT with locally run self-hosted models? Well, you know, it's been only a, a hot minute since uh, I think it's Microsoft it. said, you know, we're afraid all of our IP got stolen, and then the next day they said, oh, we're hosting uh, DeepSeek actually on Azure. So I think, yeah, we'd, we'd be delighted to maybe host locally. Wow. I think it's a great idea for privacy reasons. I, I could also rephrase the question as how do you dare not having integrated technology was invented three days ago into your product yet? <laughs> but, uh, <laughs> Uh, anyways, uh, I think we'll leave it there for now. Uh, thanks again, Mike. Let's uh, thank Mike again, and uh, we'll have. Thank you.